www.figures.com for all of your wireless needs. Go to www.figures.com and at checkout, use my code credit score. That's one word for an additional discount. Again, that's www.figures.com for all of your wireless needs. I personally have the F3. Yes, that's the phone that I have. Go to figures.com. Trust me, you will not be disappointed. Good afternoon, good afternoon, and welcome to the 800 Credit Score Man Show. I am your host, Kevin King. He is I, and I am him, the 800 Credit Score Man himself. And once again, thank each and every one of you for coming in and listening to the 800 Credit Score Man Show. I truly, truly appreciate it. Hey, so what's up, you guys? We are in a new year. Already been a crazy year. 2021 was supposed to come in and sit down silently because 2020 was so, so crazy. But here we are again on a Saturday uh, to bring you the help that you might need to help you increase your credit scores. You know if you increase your credit scores, it's going to lower the interest rates that you pay and you're going to save money. And it's not the only thing that it does, but that's the one that comes top of mind to most people. There are a bunch of things that your credit score helps you with when it comes to some of your finances. You can pay less on your insurance. Yes, that's your car insurance and your home insurance as well. No problem getting a new apartment if you need to move. Things of that nature. You don't have to put as much money down. I just talked about figures at the top of the show, right? You don't have to put as much money down on a deposit and things of that nature when you're trying to get you a, a phone. All those kinds of things are good for you and it saves you money. If you're talking about you need the $600 stimulus package, if you had a better credit score, maybe you wouldn't have to put down so much money when you try to go get something. So let's increase our credit scores. If you've been thinking about it, you've been wondering, what do I need to do? Where do I need to go to get this done? You are in the right place with the 800 Credit Score Man Show. The show is available everywhere. Yes, absolutely everywhere you get your podcast, you can listen to the 800 Credit Score Man Show. There's an app for it, especially if you're on. Um, if you're on uh, Apple, there's a I, there's an app for it there. You've got uh, apps for it all over the place with Spreaker, um, with Deezer, iHeartRadio, iTunes. Um, the show is everywhere. Sp- um, Spotify, and now it's on Verbo as well. A new place that has added the podcast called Verbo. So you guys check them out as well and listen to the 800 Credit Score Man show. Over 160 shows, over 213 thousand downloads so thank you guys thanks for coming in and listening to the 800 credit score man show please share and like the show share it with your friends now we've been working on this series talking about the five pillars of credit that's what we're going to continue with today this is the fifth this is the fifth of the five pillars of credit at least in the order that i put them for you so we're going to talk about your credit utilization today on the 800 credit score man show you'll know how to figure it out yourself even if you don't you know, sign up with a place that gives it to you, tell you what tells you what your credit utilization is. So we're going to tell you how you can figure it out yourself. Um, what's the importance of it, of course, and how you can manipulate this particular pillar for your um, for your increase for your credit scores. So that's what we're going to do today on the 800 Credit Score Man Show. And of course, of course, absolutely, I've got to give some shout outs. So I got to give a shout out to Carlton Bryant. That is my godson. He celebrated his birthday happy on the 6th. Happy, happy birthday to you, godson. William Durham, one of my frat brothers. Happy birthday to you, William Durham. Sam Young celebrated his birthday. A member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Happy, happy birthday to you, Sam. Shay King, no, re- no relation. However, if you're a king, you know I'm going to say you relate to me. So, Shay King, she celebrated her birthday. Happy birthday to you. My actual cousin, Steve King, celebrated his birthday. Happy birthday to you, cuz. And um, Jen Caligaris is celebrating her birthday. So, happy birthday to you, Jen Caligaris, um, as well. And today, today is Phi Beta Sigma Founders Day, founded in 1914. So, um, happy Founders Day to all the men of Phi Beta Sigma. And coming up later on this week, on the 13th, um, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority 
Incorporated is uh, having their Founders Day as well, founded in 1913. So um, happy Founders Day to all the ladies in the Crimson and Cream over there with Delta Sigma Theta as well. All right, so let's jump into the show, you guys. So talking about credit utilization, let's do a little recap right quick. So when it comes to your credit score, there are uh, a bunch of different uh, factors and categories, if you will, that will um, incorporate your score. And this is how, how you figure out what your score is, right? So there's a bunch of them. So we've talked about the inquiries. That's 10% of your credit score. We talked about your credit mix, additional 10% of your credit score. We talked about your length of history. That's 15% of what makes up your credit score. Now, if you just add those together right there, that, that's a small portion, right? That's only about um, 35% of what makes up your credit score. Then we jumped. We jumped to uh, talking about your payment history, and that's 35% of your credit score. I've said it time and time again. I've had this um, back and forth on all kinds of platforms about people saying, just make your payments on time. You pay your bills on time, you're going to have a good credit score. Well, that's not all that goes into it because payment history that we talked about is 35% of your credit score. Now, you would think, it would probably be higher than just 35%, but it's not. It's 35% of your credit score. So if you add those up, you come up with 70% of what makes up your credit score. Now, this last particular pillar is the credit utilization. It's 30% of what makes up your credit score. So the second uh, most important, if you will, if you're talking about the percentages and the weighting of it, the second most important after payment history. So all those people that think, yep, if you just make those payments on time, you're going to have a good credit score. Right after that, right after that portion is your credit utilization. Now, what is credit utilization? Credit utilization deals primarily with your credit cards. Yes, deals with your credit card. So you need a credit card to even get any kind of quote unquote credit or points for this particular pillar. You need a credit card. Now these credit cards, when they say utilization, they're talking about how much of your limit, that is your credit, how much of your limit are you actually using? That's what they mean when they say utilization. How much of it are you using? Is there, can, are you using too much? Are you not using enough? Are you not using it at all? There is a formula to it that they try to figure out to see how many points should you get for your credit score um, when it comes to this particular pillar. So again, this pillar is 30% of what makes up your credit score. Now, when it comes down to this, let me tell you at first uh, why it's important. So it's important because... Uh, just like when they look at your, when they, when I say they, I mean like the FICOs, the TransUnions, the Equifax, the Experience. When they look at it, they want to see how are you dealing with your credit. And certain indicators, if you will, um, will show them that this person may not be as responsible as we think they are. Or this person may be extremely responsible when it comes to their credit and dealing with their budget and managing their money. So again, it's always all about risk. The lenders are looking to limit their risk. Yes, they want to lend you money. That's how they make money, right? They need to give you some money, charge you an interest rate for it, and get that money back. That's how they're making their money. So it's all about risk, and they're trying to limit their risk um, far as, will this person pay me back? or not pay me back. So that's what they're looking at um, when it comes to it. So it is extremely important for them and one of the main factors that they're looking at when it comes to calculating your your credit scores. Now, in my opinion, this is one of the easiest of the five pillars to manipulate in your best interest. So in your best interest, this is one of the ones that you can manipulate the most. With payment history, you either paid it or you didn't pay it. You should be paying it on time all the time anyway. And if you don't, that's when you're going to get in trouble, right? That's when you're going to have an issue when it comes to your credit score and it going down. Now, if you miss payments, you're going to get a $30 hit, um, $30, a 30-point hit, a 60-point hit, a 100-point hit if you miss payments, right? When it comes to your length of history, it is what it is for the most part. You know, if you are 19, you have no length of history. If you are 30 
and you didn't buy anything on credit until you were 27, you have a short length of history. There's not a lot that you can do about manipulating that and changing it. Now, there is something you can do, absolutely. And if you don't know what that is, go back and listen to the show on length of history. Go back and listen to that show on length of history so you know what you need to do to try to elongate to make it longer because of course the longer your history the better it is for you so there's not a lot you can do with that right credit mix yep you have um, the ability to impact your credit mix it's actually only 10 percent of your credit score though right so you have the ability to impact that you can have installments and you can have revolving so you can impact those things and inquiries i'm gonna just throw inquiries out the door right so of course you can um, limit, you know, you decide when you want to go ahead and apply for credit somewhere. That's where those inquiries come in. So, yes, of course, you do have the ability to control that. But once um, they're on there, they're on there for the two years. Right. So you have those things when it comes to credit utilization. It's all about how much of the credit you're using on your credit cards. You can manipulate this because there are ways for you to decrease your your credit um, utilization or of course you can always increase it by spending more and charging more um, on those credit cards so this is to me it's the one that's most easily manipulated and it has several ways that you can change it so not just one way or, or just a couple of ways there are several ways that you can change it to benefit you and your credit score so that's why i particularly uh, like this particular pillar because that's that's the way you can do it it's it's not necessarily hard what the hard part is is having the money to actually do it or having a good enough credit score to manipulate this as well and i'll get into that um, on how you can do those things so to me this is the pillar that you want to concentrate on after of course you're making those payments every month on time this is the pillar that you want to concentrate on because a lot of people um, for the longest time had no idea that their credit card balances are uh, a part of their credit score. They had no idea that those credit card balances can um, decide if your score is up or if your score is down. So I'll tell you right off the bat, if you have credit card and it's maxed out, that is bad for you, and it's bad for your credit score. So it's bad for you in a couple of ways. If you're somewhere applying for credit, and you've got a credit card, and it's maxed out, or you got three credit cards, and they're all maxed out, to banks and lenders, that's a risk. We talk about being risk-averse. They are risk-averse. It says to them that this person is um, not only maxed out on their credit cards, they may have an issue paying these cards back because they are uh, so far or so close to what the what the limit is. And sometimes people are over the limit or you're right up to the limit. And then once they hit uh, put your interest rate on it or your interest charge, then you're over the limit. That's a bad thing for you. It doesn't to them. It doesn't seem like you're responsible and you're looking at what's going on with your credit that you might be having a money issue and a money issue for you could be a money issue for them because then you may not have the money to pay them back. So it makes a big difference. So maxed out credit cards are absolutely detrimental for you in a couple of ways, right? When when lenders are looking at it, and then when it's that way as well, your credit utilization is really, really high. And that means that your credit score is going to be lower because you owe so much money on these particular credit cards. So let's talk about the utilization and how you figure it out. Now, of course, you can get your utilization if you go use one of the free sites. You want to use one of the free sites, and they're going to tell you what your credit utilization is. Almost all of them do it. Why do they do that? Because it's so important to what your credit score is. So they'll tell you what it is. But here's how you figure it out yourself. You take your balance. Let's say you just have one credit card. Take your balance on that credit card and divide it by whatever the limit is. So if you've got a um, $500 balance and you've got a $1,000 limit, then you take $500 and you divide it by $1,000. That's going to give you .500000, right? So that's going to give you that .500. You're going to move that decimal point, that .5. You're going to move that decimal point two places to the right. 
sound like a um sound like a teacher uh, in math class. You're gonna you move that decimal point two places to the right. Got point five.